Okay, so we're going to start by um, putting our paper in this sideways mode, the landscape mode, and then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of take a look at where we are in DNA. So in the very top corner of our paper, we're going to make a tiny little sketch of DNA just so we can get perspective of what we're looking at. So in the very top corner, and I'll go ahead and draw it first so you can see, I'm going to draw what would be. So if I have DNA, so let's say this is my um, DNA, you know, you've got your, um, poly, you know, your backbone, and then you've got your nucleotide base pairs that are connected. And then what happens with the DNA, when it's wanting to, when it needs to replicate, it kind of makes a bubble. And then what happens in the bubble, okay, and kind of goes on its little merry way. So the bubble, we still have our um, base pairs sticking out here. Okay, so basically you can see the DNA is kind of splitting in the middle. So what this is showing is replication does not start, you, does not necessarily start from the end and then work its way all the way through. What happens is, basically, if the DNA starts to separate in the middle, and then every place, and it can do this in multiple places along the DNA strand at the same time to speed up the process, okay? And so what we're going to be focusing in on today is we are going to be focusing in on just this, zoom it so you can see it, is just this part. Like here, I'm going to kind of highlight, this is basically what we're going to be blowing up in our picture. So it's just like a part of a bubble, okay? And so the part of the bubble is what we're going to draw. So if I look at that, let me, I'll go ahead and draw it first so that you can get perspective. So on my paper, what I'm going to really draw is going to look kind of like a Y or a fork in a road. So I'm going to draw this. A straight part as just my DNA. And then I'm going to kind of have it split. And then I'm going to do the same thing about an inch below. And then it's going to split. We can make it split for a while. So this is representing the part that I circled in my DNA strand. So what I'm not showing here is I'm not showing the nucleotides so we're going to go ahead and draw you can you can draw a little space between the nucleotides to represent the hydrogen bond or not the nucleotide or you can just uh cr just connect them like the rungs of a ladder because our drawing is not super specific there so i'm going to just i'm just going to connect them because it's easy so these represent my base pairs okay and so these are where they're connected and then where it's split apart then I just have one of the bases on each side. So I'm going to do that. Try to make them, them match, although it's not that important. It doesn't matter if you draw five or six or however many, as long as you get the same general idea. So this is representing the basic structure of the DNA that we learned about yesterday in a much simpler way. Okay. Now, one of the things that we learned about yesterday that makes DNA important is its anti-parallel structure, which means, this is actually working. It is. Okay. The anti-parallel structure, which means that I have a three prime end of my strand. We're going to all do this the same. So then the opposite end of the DNA would be the five prime end. And therefore the complementary strand, this would be three prime and this would be five prime. Now, and what we're going to be talking about um, when we do this is we're going to be really spending a lot of time talking about the enzymes which make this happen because as we know most biological processes are controlled by enzymes now these are in no way all the enzymes required but these are the enzymes that we're going to be focusing on 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is in this space here, I'm going to list like six things. And then later as we add them to the drawing, we'll define them, we'll say what their job is, and we'll, we'll, we'll color code them to match our drawing. So I'm going to label six things. So the first thing I'm going to list is the enzyme called DNA helicase. And then, this is kind of a fun one to say, topizomerase. See a lot of ACE endings there. This is not a um, enzyme, but we're, we're to symbolize what, our, what we mean by a nucleotide. So if I'm going to say what a nucleotide looks like in my drawing, then a nucleotide is just represented by this. So the one base and part of the um, phosphate sugar backbone is my nucleotide. So it kind of looks like a T in some direction. So that's my nucleotide. So that was not very exciting. Um, then I also have uh, another enzyme called DNA polymerase. And then finally, I have an enzyme called ligase. So we're going to see where all these fit into this picture today. Okay, now where I'm doing, we should, if I'm doing this right, sticking with my script, I should be able to take a look at these, this notes handout from today, and my drawing, you should be able to follow along by looking at this notes handout. Okay, so you can kind of this, use this notes handout when you study this drawing so that you know what's happening. So I'm going to try to stick to that script. Okay, so let's see, so far, we haven't really said um, what's happening. We've just kind of got it drawn here, a partially unzipped DNA strand. All right, so basically, if we follow along, um, the DNA unzips at its replication origin, and then there's an enzyme. The enzyme helicase is the one that is job is the unzipping and the unwinding. Now, I've seen some very nice drawings which show the helicase as sort of a wrapping around the... Um, the DNA as it's going its way. I don't do very nice drawings, so everything I draw looks like a box or an oval. So feel free to make a ring around it if you are so uh, inclined, but mine will be an oval. Okay, so my helicase is basically acting at the place where the unzipping is happening. So the helicase is going to be uh, happening right here where the unzipping is occurring. And then I'm just going to kind of color it in by making stripes. So this is my DNA helicase. I'm making mine green here. I'll make it check so it gets a little darker in color. Okay. That's my DNA helicase. So I'm going to go ahead and on my drawing, I'm just going to circle it in the color that I made it. Teddy, if you want this to help you catch up, you can come grab this. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. And it is happening in the direction of the unzipping. So I'm going to draw an arrow to show which way. Um, basically, it's unzipping this way. So I'm going to kind of draw an arrow to show that. It's going to be moving down the strand of DNA. And so if I want to be sort of fancy and see how this fits into my big picture, if I go back to my little micro drawing here, I can show that this little same color arrow to show that it's gonna, the unzipping is happening in both directions at once when I'm looking at the full strip of DNA. So if I pull that, you can see how I drew that arrow or attempted to draw that arrow going both ways. So in other words, this I'm showing it one direction in one little spot, but it's happening at both sides of the bowl. Okay? And this place where this is happening, where the unzipping is occurring, is referred to as the replication fork. So replication fork, let's write it on here, is the area
where this is occurring. So replication fork would be um, this area in here. And I can, if I want to show how it's also related, I can kind of swoop it up and show that that's what I mean, this area right here, that's my replication fork, okay? So we are talking about it, so we're looking at the replication fork. So when DNA, before you can start to unzip it or pull it apart, you've got to unwind it too. So the heel case does both those things. Because imagine if you ever have something sort of twisted and you just try to pull it apart, it just gets all knotted up, it doesn't untwist. So you've got to do both. Um, but when things are twisted, they, st they sometimes they need help staying twisted. So for that, um, there is an enzyme whose job is that, and that enzyme's name is um, topisomerase. So the topisomerase enzyme, its job is to work in areas kind of around different places where it is already gone. So that's the topisomerase, and the topisomerase so it works um, where things have been um, untwisted so that it can stay unwound to get unzipped. So we'll t say what it does, and let's say what the helicase does too while we're here. We'll just kind of do a little phrase to help us remember. So the helicase job is to unzip and untwist, right? So we're just going to write that. Helicase unzips and untwists. Some people would say straighten, but untwist is a little more fun. The DNA. So that's the job of the helicase. The job of the topisomerase is to relieve the stress by unwinding. So it, kind of, it keeps it from getting um, retwisted. So it relieves the stress caused by unwinding. So the job of the topisomerase is to relieve the stress caused by unwinding. Okay. Now, we are um, looking at steps four, five, and six on our note sheet right now. All right, so basically what we're going to look at is how this happens. So there are some rules. Basically, we learned yesterday that one of the things, one of the reasons we have to pay attention to the three prime versus five prime end of um, DNA strands is DNA can only be built in one direction. You can go ahead and grab some sheets, and then when Teddy's done copying, are you done? Co could you catch up? Okay. When Teddy catches up, you can grab his sheet and copy it. Um, or actually, Emma, in that notebook on my messy desk over there where the shelves are, there's a picture that you can use to catch up. Just grab it out of my notebook. Okay, so um, in order for this whole process to start, in order for DNA to build, it's gonna sort of start build the DNA over here. In order for that to happen, DNA can't attach, new DNA cannot attach itself to just a single strand. It's gotta build on a double strand. So there's not double stranded. So what happens is, there is an um, R, something called an RNA primer. And what it does is where we're going to start replicating the DNA, the RNA primer, it will just attach itself to whatever end we're starting with. So this is my, so I'm making it, make it a different color so you can see that it makes the nucleotides and some nucleotides, but they're a different color. And that's like the starter so that the DNA can start to build. The new nucleotides start there. Okay, and that's my um, DNA, or RNA primer. Did I not draw RNA primer? I didn't. Let's add this in our list. Okay, so what we just drew is called RNA primer, and I forgot to put it on the list. RNA primer. RNA we, is useful for many things. We've used, we, we are only f familiar with 
some of those things. But RNA, since it is single-stranded, you get a little piece of RNA, and that's called the RNA primer. So then I'm just going to draw it here as like a little nucleotide. Go ahead and grab the stuff as you come in, and then Teddy will give you a picture. All right, so that is where it starts, okay? So once the RNA primer latches on, then what's going to happen is I'm going to start to add nucleotides. And the nucleotides are going to be added using an enzyme called DNA polymerase. Really? Yes. Okay, so DNA polymerase is the enzyme. So I'm just kind of draw it in the dotted line here. So it's going to start here. So my DNA polymerase starts at the RNA primer, so I'll lightly draw. And then what it's going to do is it's going to move until it gets to where the replication fork is. What's the pink? This okay. is um, DNA polymerase. The pink is DNA polymerase, and DNA polymerase's job is to start at the end where the RNA primer is, and it works its way on the replication fork. And what it does is it is the enzyme which builds and adds new nucleotides. So basically, we add our new nucleotides one at a time. That's the job of the DNA polymerase. So DNA polymerase is the builder. Okay, DNA polymerase is the builder. So we'll write that down. Do I need to let you catch up for a second? Because Okay. I, I just feel the sense of panic in the air all of a sudden. I just feel it. It could be because Dominic just bought it. What color did you make the... I made this pink. What are you looking for? The new nucleotide. I just made it brown. You can make it black if you want. The same color. You don't have to make it a different color. A lot of people just make it black, too. Okay. So we're going to make sure we've got written here. We're going to focus next on what we're going to write for DNA polymerase. So that's the pink one that's traveling towards the replication fork. Because... The direct, and, but in this case, I have it traveling towards the replication fork because I'm saying that it's, but it only works in this direction on this side because really the direction of the um, DNA polymerase is always going to be starting, it builds from a five prime end to the three prime end. So the rule is, and the direction of DNA polymerase is, and we'll write this on the side so we don't forget it because it's super important, that new DNA is made from 5 prime to 3 prime. So it's like laying down new track on a train track. It's like you got half the track and you're laying down the other half. And it, so you're starting on the new side, so that is 5 prime and here and then towards a 3 prime, so the new one. So you start building on the old original 3 prime side because you're laying down starting with 5 to 3. Okay, so what we're going to do is write on our list what, remind ourselves what DNA polymerase's job is. So DNA polymerase, I'm going to make that the color that I made this arrow and this little blobby enzyme that's working over here. I'm going to make mine was pink, so I'm going to circle mine pink because that's my color code for DNA polymerase. And I'm going to say, essentially, the DNA polymerase is the builder. You can think of that one as the builder. That's the enzyme that's adding new nucleotides. So that's your builder. That is not a technical definition, but that basically gives you the idea of what its job is. To build, add on the new nucleotides. Okay. 
Okay. So we have basically talked about everything except this ligase enzyme. So let's review where we are. We have already gotten up to step eight on our directions here. Okay. Um, we just talked about that polymerase can only add a new strand to the three primed end of another nucleotide, so the new strand is formed in the five to three direction. So that's what rule you need to remember, okay? So in other words, if this is the five end, this is the three end, you add from the three end, okay? Okay, now, this is pretty easy, goes along seamlessly. This is the strand of the DNA that's easiest to replicate, have the least issues with, so because of that, it's called the leading strand. So we're going to label this the leading strand of DNA. Leading So we talk about replicating DNA, we need to be able to identify the leading strand. And this works, because as it unzips, it just keeps building. No worries. What becomes interesting is when I have to do what's called the lagging strand. Because I'm now my polymerase is only going to run away from the unzipping. So what happens is, for example, if I unzip just a little bit, okay? So oh, wait, first, wait, wait, are we ready to move on to this next strand? Yes? Okay. So what's going to happen? So the process is a RNA primer is laid down. Well, first the unzipping occurs. Then the RNA primer is laid down. From that, DNA polymerase builds new nucleotides. So that's the process that we're going to repeat. So what happens is, so I'm going to lay down my RNA Primer. I'm just going to, because I don't have a very long strand to work with, I'm just going to make them really short together. So I'm going to lay down the RNA primer. So I'm just going to lay it right here. So the new RNA primer is going to start the process. So let's say it's only unzipped, let's say to this point, like because that, you know, it hasn't gotten this far. So it's only unzipped to here. So then we've got our RNA primer. So I can start, okay? That starts the process here. And then what happens is my polymerase, again, remember, it has to go from the three prime, it has to go the new five prime to three prime. So it's gonna build this way. So what's happened is my polymerase is going to work in this direction now. So this is my polymerase, which attaches a new nucleotide to the RNA primer. So then I've got my new nucleotides being attached. Okay. And then this then becomes the new, a new three prime end here. So it's always building towards the three prime end. So now, so it unzips there. So now let's say it unzips further. I probably should give myself more unzip space, but we'll make it work. So I'm just going to do a little mini RNA um, primer. So now my mini RNA primer, I'm going to say it's over here somewhere. So here's my other RNA primer. Pretend I'll throw in another nucleotide to make it work because I'm looking for space. So I have my other RNA primer, and then I have my polymerase. And it's going to go this way again. And it's going to lay down new nucleotides. So I have new nucleotides that are going to be laid down here. And if you're like me and didn't leave enough, you can always just throw some more nucleotides in the middle to get the idea. Okay. All right. So what I'm showing, and this gets a little crazy, is I'm showing that on this side, which is called the lagging strand, I can only build DNA in segments. Now, the segments on my drawing 
are shorter than they would actually be in real DNA, but there would be segments. So basically you'd have your RNA polymerase, or sorry, the RNA primer, and then the DNA polymerase lays down nucleotides. Then it unzips more. Primer, polymerase, lays down new nucleotides. As it unzips more, you have primer and then polymerase. So you get the idea, it's like add it, and so it's kind of a more cumbersome process. But, um, so that basically is how it's built, but the problem is we don't have a solid DNA strand. We've got some RNA in between places, okay? So what happens is, in order to, so what happens is after this occurs, before the DNA is finished, if you look at step 10 on your list, it says after um, replication occurs past the spot, the primer is removed and ligase binds. We're going to talk about something called the Okazaki fragments. Okay, so what's an Okazaki fragment? It's kind of a fun word to say. So. The new DNA that I have built that is separated by the primers, those are known as the Okazaki fragments. They're named after the scientists who actually, actually happen to be, I think, a married couple, the Okazakis, and they basically um, explain the process of how the lagging strand of DNA was built. So an Okazaki fragment so let's write this word, it's kind of a fun word, and it's capitalized because it's named after them, Okazaki fragments. Okay, so Okazaki fragments, so here is, so that's the new nucleotides, this one and there's the other one. So they're made in little segments. So those are the nucleotides, the um, complementary sections of DNA that are made on the lagging strand. And those complementary sections of, of DNA are separated by the RNA primer. So you see how they're kind of disjointed there? So we, got, we have to get rid of the RNA primer. So step 10, which we can't really draw because how do you remove something from a drawing? But step 10, Basically, it's going to explain it, and then we'll talk about it. So after the replication occurs, past the spot, the, that past a specific spot, then the primer is removed, and there's an enzyme, that's the one we have a name, ligase, connects those Okazaki fragments. So what happens is once the um, primer is removed, then there is another enzyme called ligase. A good color. And ligase's job is to patch up the spots. So I'm just going to draw it as like little little circles. So this would be like ligase would go in here, and then ligase would go in here. So I'm going to make ligase like a circle. So ligase's job is to bind the fragments. So it's like a glue. So you can think of ligase like glue. So when the primer is removed, ligase sticks things together, okay? So ligase is like the glue. So we're gonna say that the job of ligase is to bind the fragments. And I'll show the picture in a minute. So here's, so I just drew it like circles wherever the primer was. So the primer is going to be removed, and then the ligase is going to bind the fragments so you don't have all those breaks. Because once, the only reason we have to have the RNA primer is that the polymerase has to have a complementary starting point, and that's really what the RNA polymerase gives it. So once it's already got something else, then it can, it, the ligase can fix that and patch up that spot. 